Just a few days ago, Google rolled out Android 16 quarterly platform release number one, beta number one. I installed it on my first gen Pixel Fold and I showed you what was the most immediately recognizable thing about it, which is the advent, the addition of some early tidbits of what they're calling Material 3 Expressive. It is the first real substantial overhaul to the design of Android in many, many years. But in this video, we're actually going to go several steps deeper. I'm going to show you everything I have found that is new in Android 16 QPR 1 Beta 1. Now, in this video, I'm not going to spend a tremendous amount of time going into detail on Material 3 Expressive because I already did that in that prior video where I put this Pixel Fold next to a Pixel 9 Pro Fold and I gave you the comparison back and forth. So if you want to see that stuff, check the link in the description. So the first thing that I want to show you guys is how this looks in dark mode. So in that other video, I showed you everything in light mode and I got several comments asking, well, how does it look in dark mode? So we're just going to give you a quick look at that. This is light mode and now we're switching back to dark mode. There is your answer to that question. I think that it does look really good either way. I love all of the different blur effects that are here. I love the fact that when you, you know, go out of an app, you have this nice soft blur of the background that kind of slowly comes into focus. I think all of that looks really, really good. I think the animations also do look really good. In fact, if we jump into our recents, you can see some of these animations that are actually really kind of nice. You can see if I go to throw away Feedly, but then drop it back down, all of the other icons kind of bounce around and jiggle around a little bit. And look, this is running on a first gen Pixel Fold. Okay, that's a Tensor G2. This is not like a super fast phone, but even in this beta, it's handling all these animations really, really nicely. If I throw that away, they'll all kind of shift over. There's just a very consistent look and feel to the animations that I appreciate. I'll also show that on this recent screen, if you click on this new little pill icon that's floating on top of your recent apps, you do have access to this split screen button, which again, very smooth animation throws that app over to the side and then you can click on the other app and that's going to get you into split screen. This is a pretty small change, but the volume bar here that pops up when you change your volume has also been redesigned, looking very, very similar to how the new brightness bar looks as well. Let's click on the three dots to expand this out and you can see that once again, everything is maintaining a very consistent look that matches with that new brightness bar. Even though I showed it in that other video, I do want to quickly show you this cool lock screen option again because I really, really like it. If you go into wallpapers and style and we swipe over to the left to get to lock screen, let's click on wallpaper. We're going to pick a photo. And as you can see now, we're seeing it as our desktop wallpaper. We can swipe over and there's the lock screen. If we click on effects, we have all sorts of cool things that we can now do. You can see how it's sort of popping my dog's face, her ears, out of the image. I'm going to change this background color to, how about we're going to go with that color of blue. We're going to change it to this cookie shape. You can actually change the brightness of it as well. Let's drop it down a little bit and let's click on the check mark. And now that this is applied, what we have here is this really nice smooth animation where if we go into the lock screen, there she is sitting there in all her glory. And whenever I unlock, Look how nice and smooth that is. That is absolutely awesome. Now I will say that this section in particular has sort of pointed out several little rough edges for me. So notice how the font or the color of the text here for these albums is wrong. This should be a light color and instead it's a dark color making it very, very difficult to read. If we switch back over to light mode, that's going to help things out a lot. But okay, now we got something weird <laughs> going on there as well. Let's go back in. All right, we're okay there. So guys, this is a beta. You are going to have some rough edges. We also do have a change to the way that notifications will appear on your lock screen. You can see here that I have an email, but it's just going to show that little dot. Now, if I touch that dot, it's going to kind of pull down your notification shade and you can see more about that notification, but you can actually change a setting to make it just show more information right out of the box. 
If we go into our system settings and then head over to notifications, we are looking for notifications on lock screen. By default, it is set to compact view, but you can change it to full list and it's gonna be basically exactly what you normally get in your notification shade now. So this is another kind of small one, but I really like what they've done here with the way that notification dismissal looks and feels. If I'm gonna dismiss this notification, you can just swipe it away quickly, but if you kind of go a little bit slower, you're gonna notice something. Watch as I start to pull it away. It goes slowly and then it gets to a certain spot and it snaps loose right there. It just sort of snaps free. And you'll actually get this nice subtle haptic feedback, this subtle vibration, then a little pop right there as it releases. Guys, again, this is small, but all of these animation improvements do add up and create an experience that just feels very, very well thought out and cohesive. If we long press on the home screen, we do have this new option that just opens up your apps list. This is one that I was kind of confused about at first because you can just swipe up to get to that. But it might be true that for some people, long pressing and tapping app list might be easier. It does seem a bit redundant to me, but for some, like I said, it might be useful. So this is a pretty subtle change that I kind of need to change the perspective to show you. If I line up, the at a glance widget on my Pixel 9 Pro Fold, which is running Android 15, and my Pixel Fold, which is running Android 16 QPR Beta 1, you can see that there is a difference in the amount of space being taken up by that widget. Look at all this empty space above it here versus here. It's been about cut in half. What is that going to do? Well, it's going to get it more out of the way. I know that some of you would still love to be able to just remove the widget altogether. You can't do that quite yet, but it is at least sort of pushed up a little bit further, giving you more room on your home screen. I think all in all, if you combine everything I just showed you with the visual overhaul changes that I detailed in that earlier video, I think that Android 16 QPR1 is looking pretty darn impressive, and I think that we should be fairly excited to see what else comes along with the subsequent betas. This is just beta 1. Not only will subsequent betas make this more and more stable, they should also potentially change more things as well. I think QPR1 is going to be a pretty darn big deal when it does roll out here in probably a couple of few months, something like that. Sometime after Android 16 itself rolls out, which is probably going to happen in the next two weeks or so, something like that. Definitely lots of fun stuff to uh, be excited about and keep your eye out for. Guys, thanks for watching. If you came across anything else that was new, let me know in the comments down below. Subscribe for more content just like this, and until next time, Stay nerdy, my friends.